Episode 19 of the Rubber Boots Podcast, live from the back of a van in Minneapolis. That's the kind of swanky treatment we get at Super Bowl. Uh, James is here. None of the other staff is here. We're going to try to hook up with them via satellite later on. Special guest, though, Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl 44, my analyst all week, Jabari Greer. Jabari, welcome to the Rubber Boots Podcast. You won a Super Bowl. Where would this rank, though, as your career achievements being on this show? Well, this is right below, um, actually, winning the Super Bowls first, then uh-huh. marrying my wife, then changing my daughter's diapers, and then the podcast. <laughs> Poo-poo comes before <laughs> podcast. Uh, Jabari's my man all week. Jesse Palmer, The Bachelor, comes in later this week. He's got some swanky, syndicated show he does now, some sort of inside What's edition that? What's show. that called? I don't know. What is it called? The Daily Telemail or something like that? Oh, we have something. Yeah. something. Izzy Adonage will be in later in the week, but just me and Jabari hanging out, which I like. Does it When you come to the Super Bowl, uh, does it automatically bring back memories of your win with the Saints? It, it, it actually conjures up some feelings of emotional insecurity, James, <laughs> if, I can, if I can be real. I realize how long ago my... Uh, my Super Bowl win was. I believe we're we're going on seven years past now. So every time um, I come to another Super Bowl, I get further and further from the glory days of my my years. And I'm getting to the point where uh, people are, you know, you can stop saying, you know, Super Bowl 44. You can say, hey, he won a Super Bowl back in the day. <laughs> in that's the a day. That's a weird transition. <laughs> so. Uh, I was so glad to be able to be here and experience this, but I'm getting to the point right now where if I keep on talking about it, people are going to like kind of get fed up. More fun to be a media person, though, to be a player in the Super Bowl, right? It really is. <laughs> you, it really is, man. Your body is refreshed. Yeah. You get to wear your nice clothes. Yes, you yeah. look very good. You look very good last night at media night. I was yeah. impressed. Yeah, and you get to put on your good makeup. <laughs> yeah, you forgot your makeup, didn't you? This week? I almost did, and I, and I was talking to you earlier about you know when, as a man, you become emotionally secure enough in your masculinity where you can honestly ask somebody if they've seen your Mac. Are you 25. there yet? I'm not there yet. So if I lose my makeup, I keep it to myself. Yeah, that was a moment for me. I can remember the first time that I yelled to my wife. Hey, is this your powder puff or mine? <laughs> you, you cross a line that you can never go back from. You can't. Uh, and people don't realize that. You know, it's like when you lose that foundation, when you lose that powder, there is a really insecure issue that you go through about whether you should a- actually uh, invite somebody into that conversation. You know what? I, I'm starting to go. Bob McKenzie doesn't use any. And I've started to go that way. Is you reach a certain age, you don't care anymore, which is a sad point in your life <laughs> that you don't care anymore what you look like. But I'm almost there. So I'll put a little powder on and say, who the hell cares? Yeah. Look, you can't look at this face. You can't make it any worse. <laughs> uh, you get, uh, you had a super, you had an, almost had an interception in the Super Bowl. What happened there? We're, yeah. Physically or emotionally? Both. <laughs> so physically, <laughs> they were driving in the third quarter. I believe there we had a play count of six or seven plays, and they ended up getting to the 10 yard line. They had a, Really explosive offense. Pierre Garçon, Reggie Wayne, obviously Peyton Manning, Joseph Adai in the backfield. I was on Pierre Garçon. They ran what we call a fade stop. He runs to my outside shoulder. I know what it is. I played flag football (laughs) at a provincial level. I ran many fade stops, all right? Well, I was always told when you speak to the general masses, you speak to someone's grandmother. So So obviously I know that you know what a face stop is, but what I'm saying is that he threw the ball to uh, to to Pierre Garcon's outside shoulder. I stepped in front of it like the vet I was, put my hands up, and glory be, I dropped the football. But you get mistaken for Tracy Porter, so you take claim for his picks now. Don't so you? yeah, so I dropped the football, and obviously emotionally I was distraught. Uh, I knew that that was my opportunity. You only get a few opportunities in the NFL during a game to make a big play, and I lost mine. But fortunately, Tracy Porter 
through the miracle of modern tape study jumped a route on Reggie Wayne, the route that they had run earlier that we had been studying all week, intercepted the ball and took it back for a touchdown for a win for the New Orleans Saints and the city of New Orleans and everybody erupted. So to this day, when people introduce me, they say, hey, this is Jabari. You remember him. He actually intercepted the ball. He intercepted the ball and took it back, gave us our very first Super Bowl win. And he look at me and I say, hey, I'm Jabari. How you doing? You don't say I'm Trey Sporting? I do not correct them. <laughs> I let them think what they're thinking. I have, I have never said I've, inter I've intercepted the ball, but I've never corrected them. No, so, they, so they say, oh, it's Tracy Porter. And you say, I'm, J I'm Jabari, but you say that low so they don't hear it. Yeah, no, but the thing is, is that they don't even say Tracy Porter. They just attribute his play to me. Oh, they give it to they you. They give it to me. So It's not so bad. That's not so bad. So it's not, dis it's not I'm no, not, not lying. lying. You're just not, not correcting the I'm truth. I'm not correcting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know Rod Smith? Uh, I do know back Rod Smith. At, back, not Rod Smith, the football player, of but course, Rod Smith yes. back at Sports Center, our, our franchise. He does something called the Rod Smith Recap on the podcast uh, and I know you've never gotten to hear that yet so here it is the Rod Smith recap from episode 18 in episode 18 Duffy discussed his bizarre dinner at Gino Retta's house he, he says strip naked I knew the anal probing was coming they did every Rocky montage from all the Rocky movies on a loop you know what the anal probing was just fine hmm Roddy might have to drop by Shea Retta sometime Later, Puffy unveiled his new reality show, Murder Island. We battled to the death with nine other criminals for your freedom and one million dollars. Hosted by Brian Williams. My yeah. friend, you're the seventh to die here on Murder Island. There's Oops. only two left. I'll be there at the finish. When I was in Sarajevo. And all the guys agreed who would win if the rubber boot staff ended up on Murder Island. Roddy. Roddy. Yes. Roddy. Yeah, if it was hand-to-hand -hand combat, he'd be tough to beat. Yeah, Roddy would. True, I mean, I could crush all of you with just my left nipple. But Roddy's a lover, not a murderer. I mean, Murder Island would just become a more violent version of The Bachelor with Roddy on there. Everyone would fall for him, even the Navy SEAL. Anyway, finally, the fandom question was a doozy. Pick a life. Tom Brady, Justin Timberlake. Wow. Results are in. And 87% of respondents chose... Option 3, Rod Smith, baby. Nice try, Tommy. Keep plugging away, JT. No shame in sharing the podium with Roddy. Till next time, kids. There you go. Roddy. Ah. Roddy. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Uh, you can. We don't have an original question on fandom this week. Uh, we'll resume that next week back in the studio. But... If Jabari Greer is a pretty damn good life in itself. Look at the life you've had. You're a very good-looking man, nicely dressed, beautiful wife and family, mm. Super Bowl champion, mm. now working at Canada's Sports Leader. Mm. That's a great life. But if you had to pick another life, Tom Brady or Justin Timberlake? That's our question brought to you by the Fandom Sports app. Uh, there's no option three. Well, you can go off the board if you want. You can do whatever the hell you want. It's a podcast. Oh, man. Um... Wouldn't mind being Barack Obama. Oh yeah. I wouldn't mind, you know, Justin Timberlake. I, yeah, you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm not sold on his in sync days. You know, yeah. I, 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 I'm not. I don't buy that those days are pretty good. You, you could choose another musician too. I one. could, I could do that. Yeah. Uh, Marvin Gaye. Marvin. Even Gaye. though it ended tragically. Yeah. I'll change. I would change. What a time. Oh, but I love when Marvin. I get that feeling. I want sexual healing. Uh, get up. Get up. <laughs> Let's make love tonight. I, I love I love Marvin Gaye. My you know, if somebody walked ever. by the van right now and <laughs> <laughs> heard us singing "Sexual Healing," they'd get concerned. <laughs> Marvin Gaye was your man. Marvin Gaye is my favorite artist. He is my favorite artist of all time. Okay, so if you had to choose JT or Brady, though, would you take if Brady? I had to choose, to, to, you know, I, being that I'm a football player, uh, I, I think that um, what Tom Brady's been able to do on that stage has been remarkable. So I think I, I would choose Tom Brady. But it's interesting. Because I I heard through a, an interview that Tom Brady's done that even all the success that he's had, 
um, all of the blessings that he's he's been presented with that um, that he isn't content with it. I know yeah. it's crazy, isn't it? Um, We're all that way, though, aren't the real driven people are never content, are they? Well, I would argue. I would argue with that. I would argue that the most hap- that the happiest people are those who are content with everything that they have. Are you content? I am. I am. But I mean, yeah, it's it's something that. I have to continuously remind myself because right. I, I I get easily discontented. Yeah, easily. I know. I mean, we live in a world. I mean, Facebook, man. Facebook is the ultimate comparison. I don't go on the Facebook much. I'm bad with. Oh, on the anytime Twitter. you call it the Facebook, <laughs> you obviously don't go on that. <laughs> oh, what does Belichick call Snapchat? Snap face. The Snap face. Because I don't go on the Snap face yeah. one. We were on Snap face there when we were talking about that. <laughs> you know, let's get romantic for a second. Not you and me, mm-hmm. but one of my favorite stories is how you met your wife. You like that? So one? yeah, I really like it a lot. So <laughs> you know, we're very silly on this podcast, of and uh, especially when Puffy's here. Puffy's my companion. We don't. We don't. P Diddy. P Diddy. Well, yeah, not yeah. P Diddy. Not not the P Diddy. He, oh, would, okay. he would never come on. The other TSN's P Diddy. Oh, okay. Right. But um, you know, he talks sexuality. It gets you know, it gets ugly sometimes. <laughs> so let's take it back to romance. Okay. And tell me very quickly the story of you meeting your wife. Uh, how how quick do I have? Well, it's a podcast. You can do whatever the hell you want. Oh, okay. So, my wife is a Caribbean Canadian. Okay. When I played for the Buffalo Bills, we would often go up there uh, on weekends and spend some time. So me and now, I, when you say spend some time, this spend a weekend. You're young. Is this like clubbing days? Yes, yes, clubbing and. What was your spot in Toronto? You know what? Uh, I don't. The, the clubs change so much. I remember it was one club. One club called Sugar. We used to say it to Soho all the time. So any club around that area. Yeah, I was, did a uh, lot of time at Sugar behind yeah. the, behind the velvet ropes. So yeah, exactly. So we love Sugar. That was the very first time I've I was, never been to Sugar. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Call me fishing. Okay. So anyway, you you come so, up to Toronto. I come up to to Toronto with a teammate of mine, and we go out one night. And you know, I was I was getting sick of the club. I was just getting tired. I was at that point of my time, or a point of my life, where I was like, you know, there must be more than this. How old are you? I'm um, 26. Okay. I was 26 at the time. So I went to bed the next day. Woke up, and like any other man, I felt like I needed to get something. I needed to, I needed to take my mind off of the the depressive state that I was. So what did I do? I went shopping. Of course. Of course. Went downstairs. The elevator opens up. And like a movie, I see this young lady standing behind the concierge desk. And I, I kid you not, I heard singing. What was it like that? I saw the fog li- literally fill the room. And like a conveyor belt, I'm riding straight to her. For reals? De- dead serious. And that's not even the, the most impactful part. I was at a point in my life where I, I was missing this this piece. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew that I didn't have it. And when I asked my my future wife where she knew where I could go to go shopping. So wait a second, you you you, you get ahead. off the elevator. You I see, see this her girl, for the you, first time. You're in love. You hear the angels. It's incredible. The clouds clear. Do you go talk to her right away? So I, I went to go ask her where where shopping where the shopping area right. around here is. So right. I went to go ask her a very professional question. Right. Her being a concierge, she right. was a person to ask. Okay. So she started first. She noticed my my accent, and one thing I didn't realize is how exotic my accent is for Torontonians. <laughs> and she said, "Where are you from?" I said, uh, "I'm from Tennessee." And then she started making light banter, which made me upset because I thought she was just being nice to me. Uh-huh. The most beautiful girl I've ever seen. I don't need you. Because concierges, that's what they do. I don't need you to be nice to me. You're too beautiful to be nice to me right now. Be real. I right. need you to, like... Did you say that? No, I felt it. Okay. So I was really mean to her. Oh, okay. You know, I was I was protecting myself. Right. <laughs> so, but the, the thing was that as soon as she started talking, she seemed to have the exact piece, P-E-A-C-E, that I was missing in my life. It felt like a complete puzzle. How can you tell that? I, I just knew that she had what I was missing. And I told myself while she was talking that God had never blessed me with a woman like that. That's exactly what I said in my mind. I go out shopping and I can't get this woman out of my mind. You know, there's a time as a man, there's a there's a place in the time when you realize if I don't do something about this, mm-hmm. I will regret this for the rest of my life. Right. And I knew it. If I don't say something to this woman, I will regret this for the rest of my life. So I put the shoes down. I don't need any shoes. I walk back to the Soho. I'm trying to figure out what to say to this woman to, should I go cool? Should I go calm, confident? 
Hi, I play for the Buffalo Bills. You know, hey, listen. I'm a big star. I and I, very handsome. And I so I started pacing back and forth in front of the building. Could she see you? 20 feet floor to ceiling windows. <laughs> She's, she was, she's looking at this one guy pacing back and forth and then make a beeline through, through a revolving door straight to her. To this day, she thought I was going to rob the place. That's what she told me. <laughs> she said, I thought you were going to rob me. I came straight up to her. I walked up to her going as fast as I could. So obviously, I went full aggressive. Right. I said, hey. I don't know if you have a husband hey. or a boyfriend. Hey. <laughs> That's not the best opening. I don't know if you have a husband or a boyfriend. I just want to know if you would let me take you out to eat tonight. And? It was a long pause. She chuckled, <laughs> broke the ice, and said, I get off late. Let's do a late dinner. Wow. Boom. Blew my mind. I said, okay, great. And I left. Didn't wow. get the number. Didn't get anything. I didn't give her a chance to change her mind. <laughs> I went straight up to my room, realized 20 minutes later that I don't have any type of contact information. Went back down. I came downstairs like a dog between, <laughs> with my, my tail between my legs, and I said, uh, can I uh, get your number, please? <laughs> That's awesome. So you go on the date, it's real, and now you're married and have, what, eight kids? Oh, no, I mean... <laughs> Me and my wife have three children. That's amazing. Um, and I wish to this day I knew exactly what our future is going to hold. So I would, because I've already like pictured what I would say to her. I'm like, hey, you don't know me, but right. one day you're going to be my wife. And you know what, Canadian girl, and now you've uh, you've moved, brought her back and moved yeah. back to, to Canada. You're on your way, right? You got a house, you're here. Living the dream, bro. And we're going to see you lots more on TSN. Listen, thanks for doing this, buddy. I know it's a little creepy hanging out with me in the back of a van waiting to do our sports center stuff but uh, thanks for coming on the rubber boots podcast of course have a great time you are welcome anytime that was tracy porter ladies ah! and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> let's get to our next segment and it's caught by michael Irvin. michael Irvin is double covered but he's got it anyway michael Irvin still on his feet he's gonna score michael Irvin. that was a one-handed touchdown michael Irvin. with my man michael Irvin who is looking just fantastic right now. I was talking about this on TSN. I, I showed up last night feeling really brave. I'm pretty conservative when I dress, okay? So I had this purple paisley thing, and then you had this brown leather thing on that was just so nice. I can't compete with that. Yeah, you, hey man, listen, you, you look great then. You look great now with the purple you have on now. I, I have that exact shirt, I love that. See what you're doing? You're learning now. Well, you know now, other people have to learn that the guts of the suit can make a suit. You can take a plain blue suit and put guts in it. That striped shirt and that nice tie, and the guts make the whole suit. You understand that, man. In opening night, you understood that. My issue is with other guys, we have to understand this is opening night of the biggest event, our biggest sporting event. You got to dress up for that. You got to be ready for that. You can't come looking like a banker. You have to be ready, and you, my man, Came ready. How much? How much was that suit? Can you share that with me? That suit. You uh, had on that, right <laughs> <laughs> that suit costs a few bills, right there. You know, it was a gift for my wife. You know, yeah, yeah, people say, oh, "Did you did you buy that for yourself, or was it a gift?" I say, "Yeah, both." <laughs> my wife bought it for me, so I bought it for myself, and it is a gift. You know what I mean? Got, that, that's how it works. You got the beautiful fur ice fishing coat on today. Yeah. Um, you went ice fishing with Steve Mariucci, so and fun. you and you beat him. Had so much fun. It was incredible, too. We, we were doing this competition. You know, first we fished outside, and then we went in one of those tent fish things they have, too, and you fish indoors in, 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 the, um, in the little ice hole. And, oh, my God, Coach, he was up 1-0 because we had a competition. He was up. He was up 1-0, and we dropped another line. We said, next fish it's going to win now. So, Coach, we both go down. We both get a fish about the same time. And we're, we're willing to pull them up. But my fish swam around his fish, and so I pulled up two fish out of one hole. It was the Minnesota Miracle Part 2. The receiver Diggs did it one time, and the receiver Irvin did it again. I pulled up two fish out of one hole to beat Coach 2-1 to one in the last second. And right then, while we were arguing, we get arguing, we got a phone call. From Al River Run, the head of NFL officiating, and he made the call. He said if the fish came up through the hole, then that fish was a catch, and I got both catches. Mooch was like, what are you talking about? My hook is in that fish's mouth. I said, but it came up through this hole, and that means I won. It was a miracle. 
to win like that in the last second. It happened again right here in Minnesota. Listen, man, I got to let you go because I know you got to run. Thanks for spending some time with yeah. us and have a great time this weekend, all right? Hey, thank you, guys. I'm having a great time, man. Minnesota, it, it, it's been a great spot so far to have a little fun. All right, so let's see if we can hook this up. Uh, I've, I'm inside my Minneapolis studio. Uh, Stoff, are, are you there back in Toronto, Stoff? Yes, yes. Stoff's here. Good, good. Lester, are you back in uh, studio in Toronto or are you on a sound stage somewhere? Gotcha, gotcha, James. Got yes, just coming through faintly. Yeah. Excellent. And now Puffy uh, from the Cayman Islands, Cayman Islands Bureau. Puffy, are you there? Yes, I'm here, James. Oh, amazing. I knew this would work. This is fantastic. You got a cold, Puffy? Unlimited budget of, for this had, production. Had a late night last night. And here we are. How is it down there in the Cayman Islands? Oh, it's beautiful. 27 and sunny every day. Same with Minneapolis. <laughs> There's no chance at 27 It's, it's just Fahrenheit been, it's been amazing Celsius, so far. Fahrenheit. I went to the uh, Maxim party last night. Went Those with Jesse are the Palmer. Worst. Oh, with Palmer, it's a game changer, though. <laughs> yeah. That went from being a lonely <laughs> night to a busy one. I uh, wanted to do a few segments with you guys so you could participate in the Super Bowl oh, pod. Awesome. So uh, why don't we get to dreams to start things off? So baby, dry your eyes. Save all the tears you're crying. No, that's what dreams are made of. Dreams is brought to you by iDrinkCoffee.com, the best damn coffee in Canada. In fact, they import coffee from all over the world. It's specially brewed in Milton. I am right now trying to decide on the espresso machine that I'm going to buy for my lovely wife. I have it narrowed down to two, and I'm going to pick one and buy her one in the next couple of weeks. Don't tell her. She'll never, ever listen to this pod. She never listens to or watches anything I've ever done. But uh, she'll be very excited about her espresso machine. Would you be stunned if she came, like, if she mentioned something from the pod one day? It's like, oh, I was listening. Would you be like... Yes, like, <laughs> I would be utterly floored because I'm not even sure she understands what it's all about or what it is. This is not, by the way, a spectacular dream. No? You know, I was hoping to have had a better dream at Super Bowl, but I needed the segment to happen, and it doesn't have the cameos. Look, it's hard to match La- a, couple of, a couple, couple of weeks ago when, yeah, really you were good, murdering yeah. people, and Lester's music was playing, and yeah. Dutchie was there, and Bobby Weeks, and, and Bump were all there. Yeah. But this is, uh, this is a dream I had, so I'm, it's a quick one. I'm going to go through it for you. I'm at some sort of fair. (laughs) Literally, I'm at a fair of some degree. The Canadian women's hockey team is there, not the current version. Uh, Nurse Bonhomie is there. Oh, nice. So so she's there as a player. As a player. Haley Wickenheiser is there. Nice. Um, I don't really recognize any of the other players, so there's some young, some older. Uh, I believe this is their celebration after being named to the Olympic team. They're celebrating. Nurse Bonhomie. Uh, do I need to clarify who this is to people who may not have listened maybe. to earlier podcasts? Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. Uh, Olympic gold medalist Tessa Bonham, uh, a.k.a. Nurse Bonhomi. Um, she says to me, Duffy, Wick needs you to watch her little horse for a while. Okay. Uh, Wick's horse is the size of my dog. <laughs> it's like a, like a miniature poodle pony. But it's, but it's a horse. horse. And, it's, and it's all decorated like one of those Carlsberg horses. Now, uh, is, is, are they real? Like, are there actual miniature horses? I don't... Yeah, there are, but I don't think this small. But this small. This okay. is like the size of a, okay. a small dog. Oh, okay, so... And it's on a leash, and oh. I have to go, like, walk it around. And that... The horse stays with me the entire dream, by the way. And it was really strange. So I walk it around the fair. Now we're at the after party. Nurse Bonhomie, Wickenheiser, uh, they've left. I don't recognize the rest of the players, but they're playing beer pong, but using basketball, so they keep crushing the plastic cups. I tell them they're not doing it right. They say, nice horse. I want to say, uh, it's Wick's horse. It's not my horse. Yeah. But instead, I lie. I said I want it playing poker against Toby Maguire. Now, the reason I say this is that I saw Molly's Game on the oh, weekend. Are you nice. aware of the film Molly's Game? Yes. I've heard of it, yes. Yeah. Okay. I heard it's amazing. It's very good. And Toby Maguire is the... Okay, so Michael C- Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. He plays uh, this Mr. X, as they call him in the movie, because she could not identify... Uh, everybody, I think it, I think she identifies Tobey Maguire in the book, but I'm not sure. It's not identified in the movie. Uh-huh. It's just a big time Hollywood star who is a complete, really, yes, and is also an amazing poker player. Okay, so basically, Lester, the story's about this girl who gets a job in L.A. and the the boss ends up bringing her to these poker games who have the who's who of. You know, like A-Rod is there, Ben Affleck, DiCaprio, and all these super rich guys, and they play this exclusive poker game for ridiculous amounts of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes a million bucks on the table kind of thing. Wow. 
And Toby Maguire apparently is Mr. X. All I think he is actually named in some court affidavit because she eventually gets busted, and um, he is just out to destroy. He basically says, "I'm out to destroy lives. I want to steal, take everyone's money, and I'm out to destroy lives." But he's an amazing poker player. Wow, really? But anyway, that must have been in my head because uh, that's the line I use in my dream. Molly's game, by the way, highly highly recommend it. Uh, an appearance in Molly's game by my man Gurdip. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. Really? Yes. What does he play? Second movie that I've seen Gurdip in. Gurdip has been in two films that I've does seen. Did he play a news wow. anchor? He plays a sportscaster. So Molly was a mogul skier for the U.S. She almost made it to the Olympics. Really? When she had a crash, that's what took her on a different course and ended her running poker games. Uh, Gurdip is the play-by-play guy for the mogul skiing. Nice. And the analyst is the guy that was Dini Petty's announcer. Dan or something. He's like a Canadian guy. Really? He used to be a CTV guy. He used to occupy our studio. Not Dan Robertson. Six. I can't remember his name, and I'm going to embarrass you. I'm not no, that he's listening no, to the podcast, but the old Dini Petty show, he was like the announcer guy. Really? He was like her Ed McMahon. I don't really remember. Anyway. Dan Matheson. That's no, it it's not Dan <laughs> Matheson. <laughs> no? No, it's not Dan You Matt. said that was... Co- it may not even himself. be Dan. I'd have to look it up. Um, anyway, on, Gurdip, Gurdip was Side also... Note, who's a better actor in the movies, you or Gurdip? Well, Gurdip gets to play himself. I was playing a character version of myself. Gurdip is just straight. He's just doing straight lines. Oh, here she comes. She's got to Was his character named Gurdip? No, he just said so he was Gurdip play- as announcer sort of thing. So he had to play a Gurdip, bit. by the way, for our listeners, you don't remember Gurdip. He's a terrific guy. He was on TSN. He's on CP24 yeah, now. He's a great morning host. Prominent great morning anchor. He's so good. And huh? an actor. He was in Arrival. Another very prominent film playing a news anchor. Really? Yeah, he would appear on like the TV screen sometimes reporting on the aliens. I actually watched uh, Goon, too. Mm-hmm. You were good. Not bad, right? Yeah, you're pretty good. You finally watched it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I'm better. Yeah. You, but Gurdip's handsomer, right? He's a good-looking man. True. Hair's always perfect. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I email Gurdip on the weekend, and I say, Hey, Gurdip, uh, nice job on the moguls or whatever. And he, he goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> And I said, he goes, now I'm a little bit, I'm like four Jack Daniels in, but I'm, I'm like, uh, Molly's Game, you idiot? He's like, oh, yeah, I filmed that like two years ago. I have no recollection. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Even though he was in it. Uh, so anyway, where the hell was I? Was I still in the middle of my dream? Yeah. No, oh, yeah. T- yeah. Tony why are you chirping? The players say nice horse. <laughs> I want to say it's Wick's horse. Instead, I said I won it playing against uh, Tommy McGuire. That was my like drop the mic line yeah. dream over. Uh, that was it. It's not the best dream I've ever yeah. had. I like the Toby Maguire thing. Though. But I needed to have it in for I Drink Coffee. He was like yeah. uh, DiCaprio's like best friend. Oh, I know. I like DiCaprio, but I don't think I like this Toby Maguire character. I know, but he's so, like, as Peter Parker, he's just such an innocent, nice guy. But Yeah, well, yeah I, I heard stories about him with that Molly's Game thing. Molly's Game. Aaron that Sorkin. Sounds very good. So that sounds a, Aaron very good. Sorkin wrote it? Yeah, he's a very good that sounds writer. sounds very good. Yes. I like uh, with Jessica Chastain. Oh, so good. Yeah, she's a good actress. She's an uh, amazing really actress. Very talented. Like Kevin her. Costner, who... Costner's know, in it? Costner plays uh, Molly's dad. Uh, good role for him. Any, he's any he's the, into the kind of like the sixty-year-old dad role guy. And listen, when he played, uh, we played uh, Jonathan Kent. Who's that? What's that? John, Superman. John, uh, Kevin Costner played Superman. Super, he played uh, Jonathan Kent, his father. He played Superman's father. Clark Kent's father in, in Man of Steel. I didn't you know. know that. And he shows up again in uh, Dawn of Justice. I see. How, are you so into the good. Marvel stuff? Uh, no, uh, I, don't, I don't do that. I, Man of Steel is very good. I didn't like Batman versus Superman versus much, oh, uh, but, but very much, but. Uh, yeah. Costner still looks good, though. He does look good. Molly uh, says that it, it, it seems like Affleck was a decent guy. Yeah. Didn't talk much. DiCaprio was a decent guy. Yeah. And, but uh, Tobey Maguire. Yeah, I think I would have liked to have hung out with Affleck. Yeah. He seems like, you know, he liked to gamble, likes to drink. He'd been a fun guy. Yeah. Uh, not the best dream ever. Apologies to our audience, but it, it did have a mini horse in it. Hey, that's never wrong, that's is something. it? That's something. Stoff better do a lot with that in post. Whoa. Little horsey noises. <laughs> noises. <laughs> and it had Nurse Bonhomie. <laughs> if you have Nurse Bonhomie, and I take it back, if you have Nurse Bonhomie and yeah. a miniature horse in a dream, <laughs> that's a damn fine dream. Time for things and that Toby I McGuire. things that I saw on Twitter. Freaky pigs, strange chicks, world affairs, polar bears, fake news, nice shoes, big boobs, jack dudes, all of these things and more. As I sat on the shitter. Things that I saw on Twitter. You know, I never curse. I never curse at anything I write. Ever. And, 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 and I just, that, yeah, no. I have to admit, you're one of the cleanest living uh, musicians I think I've ever met. Is that fair? 
I, I think that's fair. I, you know, I do wonder. I mean, listen, I've been here at TSN for 22 years, so I wonder, you know, what my life would have been like if I wasn't here full time and on the road or stuff like that. But mm. I don't, I don't think might I might have gone sideways. Might have gone sideways, maybe. Sideways, Lester would be maybe. a good character for the pod. Well, uh, sideways, Lester. <laughs> wonder how my life would have been if I was on the road. All the exactly. Time. <laughs> oh no, you'd be dead by now. <laughs> that's an, you, you're on the road about two weeks a year, and you barely survive that. So our buddy Matt Cade, I as Typically, I'm terrible at checking the social media, and uh, he'd sent me this DM ages ago uh, from somebody who'd sent something on Twitter uh, about... I'm just going to read it to you, okay? This comes out of a book. From names that parents around the world have attempted to bestow on their children, they are cited in a lawsuit that was filed in a Georgia Superior Court in March. The ACLU brought the suit on behalf of Elizabeth Handy and Bilal Wak, who refused a birth certificate in 2016 when they attempted to name their daughter Zelika Graceful Lorena Alla, which doesn't sound crazy to me. No. So here are the names that people have attempted to bestow on their children that I guess have been rejected. I didn't know that somebody could reject a name for a child. But this is what actual parents tried to name their children. Tiny Hooker. Toilet Queen. Stud Duck. Cash Guy. I love cash that one. Guy. I'm the Cash Guy. That's got to be a Toronto one, no? Yeah. Uh, giant Pelvis. <laughs> Ghoul Nipple. What is wrong? G H O U L. Sex Fruit. Sex Fruit. Yay Detroit. Or Yeah Detroit. I'm not sure which that. Candy Store. S T O H R. Fish and Chips. Fat Meat. <laughs> Fat Meat Cameron. Wow. Barrett, meet your son, Fat, fat meat. meat. Acne Fountain. <laughs> That's not a wow. good one at all. Terrible. <laughs> Legend Belch. I like that. Legend Belch Duffy. That's a good name. Freak Skull. Freak Skull McLean. <laughs> That's a, see right there? That's a Marvel superhero. Yeah. Freak, Freak Skull McLean. Look out, guys. Freak Skull McLean is here. Uh, Satan. Dracula. Zombie. Loser. Lust. Sloth. Loser. Violence. Like... Cholera. <laughs> wow. Messiah, that's all right. Messiah. Crimson Tide Red. That's terrible. Louisiana Purchase, November 16 Bus Shelter. No, number 16 Bus Shelter. <laughs> Tula Probably does, where they were conceived. Tula does the hula in Hawaii. It also sounds like a conception story. Mm. And um, I'm a f-ing moron. Wow. Wow. That's a, you, you buried the lead there. <laughs> Those were all names that people yeah, tried to name, stupid, man. name their children. Did you consider anything crazy in, in naming your, your children? I wouldn't. I like the name Cotton. <laughs> did you actually throw that out there? Uh, with No, Tanya. Which one did I really want? I wanted Cam. Cam? Cameron. Yeah. Cam Cameron? Yeah. But she didn't like that. I wanted, uh, you know how, this was years ago, before, before um, Jaden became popular and Hayden became yeah. popular. Years before that, I came up with the name Raiden. 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 You call him Ray for short, but yeah. Raiden. That's pretty good. R a y d e a. Yeah, Raiden Duffy. Yeah, Raiden Duffy. Now, I'm that's sure good. that's a name out there. That's I never one I wanted. Heard of that? Name. Couldn't sell that on my. It's pretty one. good. Raiden. Raiden. And I told you the other one I wanted was Caden. Cade. 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 Cade Duffy. That's pretty good. Cade name. sounds like a Texas high school quarterback, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, like that's what Cade I was Duffy. going with. Yeah, Stoff, You Stoff. and Maria, did you uh, ever consider anything <laughs> crazy? For your child? Uh, no, although uh, I remember once I was watching the Little League World Series and there was a kid up to bat and his last name was Money. And uh, on the bottom it listed his sibling's name and one of the sibling's names was Cash. That's awesome. So they named yeah. their kid Cash Money. Cash yeah. and Money. That's, cash money. that's something that Puff, I alternate that's universe awesome. Puff would oh, do. I love, I get it, I would Cash Cameron. Ooh, cash Cameron? <laughs> yeah. If I was, I don't have any kids, but I was like thinking some African names like, you know, that, that'd be like, McLean. That's <laughs> <laughs> Just little sounds, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Do, say that, but say uh, it with a Jamaican spell accent. That? <laughs> McLean, what's wrong with you? I told you to clean your room. <laughs> How do you spell that? I don't know how you spell it. <laughs> By the way, this satellite system is working fantastically. Exactly. You sound clear as day yeah. in the Cayman Islands. Better than usual. Lester sounds like he's right next door. Stoff's done an amazing job with this technology. Yes. You know what we haven't done in a while? Why don't we do, uh, how you got an Urban Dictionary one, Puff, back uh, from the Cayman Islands? Uh, my, bu- my buddies told me before I left for the trip, they said <laughs> that you should do, you should do a, an Urban Dictionary. And I said, okay. Great, great idea. And they, and they uh, gave me one. 
Yeah. We uh, got Hold on. We got a oh, the theme song. Is it still, it's still it's that long one? Did you do a short no, no, one? No, I dictionary. see you guys, but I was really dancing here in Minneapolis. Okay. You, Puff, in the Caymans? Yeah, I was dancing. The, I think we probably it was probably a little bit of delay between the three of us, but yes. Now, if they want to show a clip from this on the television, how are they going <laughs> to edit it together? It's going to be difficult. Mm. We're going to have to have the four squares. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> We're going to be like the Brady Bunch. Here's the story. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work in post. Yeah. Start waving down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Puff, what's your, uh, what did the guys come up with? Uh, Gerther. Oh, that's I got. I know that one. That's oh, the first one I know. You know that was it. Yeah, that was Gertha. a take on um, Donald Trump's birther thing because f- people who fake their weight, basically, right? Yes. People who lie about their weight. Yeah. Woo! That's so, the first Urban Dictionary one I've ever. So, I should let everybody guess first. Yeah, so should. that means they lie about their penis. People who don't believe the official <laughs> penis. Trump medical. A girth, their, a, a, what is, what's, what's the what's the word? People that a girther, a girther, girther. Oh, so you remember when um, people that didn't believe Obama was born in America? Yeah, and they those were called birthers, basically. The Trump led the birther movement uh. of questioning, and so I. The only reason I know Puff is I saw in a tweet. I think it was the original tweet. Some yeah. guy said, "Has anybody co- after Trump announced that he was 197 pounds or whatever?" Yeah. And people were scoffing at it. Somebody tweeted, "Has anybody coined the term yet, Gerther?" Uh, and uh, and hence I knew it. I'm well, very proud. It's the first time I've ever got. Yeah, you're... It's not really Urban Dictionary though. That's sort of modern yeah. Urban Dictionary. Right? I was trying to give. Uh... You seem really defeated over the line. I can't see your face right now. <laughs> but <laughs> you guys know the word ascertain. Well, that's not Urban Dictionary. That is Urban Dictionary. <laughs> no, it's not. That's, that's a dictionary, dictionary word. No. That's just it a smart-ass word. No. The ascertain. word ascertain okay. is in the word Urban Dictionary. Do you want to take a guess of what it means? What? Yeah, it's figuring out something. No. As soon as I can it ascertain. Means to entertain someone with your ass. As- oh, ascertain. A- oh, a you, different word. Hey, Sally, why don't you come up to my house and ascertain <laughs> me? <laughs> I like that. Oh, wow. It's, ba- it, you know, it's, it's true. Look it up. It's there. Hmm. You ascertaining anybody tonight? Stop! You might <laughs> stop. You might have to edit my word out. <laughs> no, I was good. I finally got one no, right. Good. No, no, leave it in. That's good. Yeah, it's excellent. You look so disappointed. I mean, you sound so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to go back to the beach and have a few drinks. <laughs> Throw the old pigskin around with the children. Well, thank you for guys for joining us uh, on the special Super Bowl edition of the Rubber Boots Pod. Uh, should we do our Super Bowl picks? All right, Super Bowl pick time. Um, Coin toss. Oh, the big ones. Oh, heads. Uh, I'm a tails. Yeah, I'm usually a tails guy, but I'm, I, I. Wow. First thing came off the top of my head. Was heads. Last year, the tiebreaker. Heads. You heads. gave that a lot of thought. Well, heads. All right. Uh, are we going to do like all these prop bets? Is that what we're going to do? Who uh, first first points on the board? You know the one I always wanted to bet on. You know they have the length of the national anthem. Yeah. If you if you go to sound check. And there will be a lot of people to get into soundcheck. If could you, you be there for soundcheck? I don't know, but I maybe could. I, I don't think so. I don't think I could get inside the building. But I've often, there's times I could. Like, I think in San Fran, maybe we were outside taping uh, a couple years ago, the Panthers-Broncos Super Bowl. And I could hear it. And I thought to myself, if you time the sound check, it's going to be within a second or two. They pretty much sing the same way, For right? sure. That's true. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah. And and you would know the answer to or, that question. Like, I always wonder, like, fr- friends of those, like the friends of the artist, why wouldn't you just say, okay, just slow her down, take your time. <laughs> or just tell <laughs> us how long it is. Get somebody tape, tape the sound check, yeah. and you got it, right? Well, it's always pre-recorded anyway, so they'll know how long it is. Yeah, that, also, that some see that would, the somebody would know. There's got to be some cheating going on. I'm there, sure because that one seems really. It's not always pre-recorded. I think the last few have been live. Really? Yeah, you know, I Whitney think Whitney Houston's live. Whitney's was recorded. Whitney's, right. Whitney's was recorded, but there's been so much. That was awesome. There's been so much backlash that I think in recent years they've tried to do them live as often as possible. Um, what other prop bets do you want to do? Um, first, who's team. doing the anthem? Do we know? I don't know. I have no idea. Pink, I believe it's pink, right? It's 
Pink is doing the anthem. Yeah, oh, she's gonna be anthem. she's gonna be fly. She'll Will she be wild. flying from a, a some sort of uh, that was good. I like that high wire. Show she did. She's that, was, that girl is strong. She's, very, she's so. super strong. Yeah, she was like sideways and hell no. I saw her live crazy opening course. for Lenny Kravitz in 2002. Unbelievable. Big That's big so fan good. of Pink. Yeah. 2002. She's 2000. been going at it that she's long. Been around for a long time. Yeah, since late Jesus. 90s. That's like 16 years. Well, Little math time. there. <laughs> <laughs> really, well, really, really well done. He didn't notice I winked after. Let's just pick a winner. Old uh, school bet. I'm going to say the Eagles. I'm betting hard on the Eagles. Really? And if they Eagle get up the big f- early, I am cashing out right. and betting on the Patriots. Isn't that so, like if it's 21 nothing Eagles at halftime, they will be like so uncomfortable in that dressing room, don't you think? Oh yeah. The, yeah, mis- the uh, mystique is such I think that... They're gonna, I think it's Eagles year. Well, here's what I'll say. Uh, this is Jimmy's sixth Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, four out of the first five Patriots victories. I've never seen the Patriots lose a Super Bowl. I would love to see them lose a Super Bowl, but I just don't think it's going to happen. So I'm, I don't I'm think gonna they're going to lose Pats. either. I yeah. think, I yeah. think be- Nick Foles, he, he, I always feel like, okay, <clears throat> this whole thing about teams winning their Super Bowl, like the Saints... Uh, even though they came back and played great, like the week before was kind of a huge win for them. And the Vikings get their miracle, and that's yeah. a huge win for them. And Jacksonville beating Pittsburgh was a massive win for them. And the Patriots, like it's it's all nothing until they get get to the big. Yeah. And the Eagles, that felt like their Super Bowl. It did feel big, especially for, for Nick Foles, right? Yeah, for sure. To have a game. Like, can he do that back to back? Like the analytics guys would say, probably not. But I would, I'd love it. And the one thing, Puff, the Patriots Super Bowls are always close. They are. When they're, you always take the points. When they're favorites, it's always close. Yeah, like the Seahawks game, they, you know, that was Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. Whatever, was, fifteen years ago was was right there. They needed one drive at the end of the game. And then the Cardinals. Yeah, they always. No, they didn't play the Cardinals. Didn't the Cardinals play the Patriots in the Super Bowl? No, they played Pittsburgh. Oh. That was a close game. Yes, <laughs> yes, <that was> good. <laughs> the Panthers played yeah. the Patriots. With Jake uh, yeah, DeLone? Yeah, I think they did. That's the one I'm thinking yeah, of. Yes, yes. That was a, that game could have gone either way. Yeah, they, Patriots don't blow teams out. No. So, let me, I, let I me say this, and maybe this is a fandom question. Obviously, we're, we're in the second week of the Super Bowl, or the, you know, the, the week between, but I don't really like the gap. I wish it was AFC, NFC, and then the next week's Super Bowl. Yeah, they just... I, I agree. Stuff? I like it the way they do it at Grey Cup when it just goes bam, bam, bam like that. I agree with you, but so a, the Super Bowl is so big. You want everybody healthy. It's in the dome. Yeah, but and I feel like there's so much media obligations for them. Yeah, that it's, they don't get real practices in. It's almost like this week is the practice yeah. week, and then the next yeah, week's just the show. Just I'm with you. I, I like the momentum of doing that, but I understand why they do it here, Lester. But, but is it a fandom question? What should they have a gap? Should they do away with the week? The week, I don't think people week, care. Yesterday. I don't think people care enough. That would be my thought. Um, because I don't care. Do you care? No, I don't care. Sorry, Lester. We care about you. Yeah, just didn't I care about this particular that. question. That's fine. No problem, guys. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here I'm from uh, back to the beach. Yeah, you get back to the beach, Lester and stuff. Thanks from uh, whatever you're doing in Toronto right now. I got to go get a massage. Yeah. At the hotel, the luxury hotel I'm at, nice. which is the Hampton Inn, <laughs> which is probably eleven hundred dollars a night this week. The Hampton oh, yeah. Inn, uh, Minneapolis, that. or the Hampton Inn, St. Paul. The best is like the when we're in Augusta, the hotels are like forty bucks a night, and then Masters Week they're like seven hundred. Six hundred. Super Bowl is even worse. We stayed at one in Jacksonville. The year it was in Jacksonville, um, I think that might have been the was that the Patriots Eagles year? Um, yeah, I the think Patriots it was. somebody. And we were an hour outside of Jacksonville. A stupid place to have a Super Bowl. There's no hotel rooms in Jacksonville. And Mark Maletti, Millett, our cameraman, yeah. his, his room literally had like a massive blood stain. Like no, it had everything no. except the chalk outline. It wasn't Maletti, it was Blimke. I heard about that. Mark Blimke. Yeah. Because he got a free trip to Hawaii out of it. No, this is a different one. So Maletti, it was definitely Maletti on the Jacksonville one, so Blimke must have had it somewhere different because I don't remember Blimke at that Super Bowl. This was Maletti. You've been known to forget people. Maletti went to the store to buy the cleaning products to clean the carpet up because it was that bad. You heard the Blimke one, right? No. He got a free trip to Hawaii? Yeah. There was a dead body in his room? No, it was like a huge blood stain on his bed. On his mattress, yeah. And it was at a Super Bowl. Yeah, I remember about <laughs> it was this like match. a really shady. It was like a yeah. really shady um, hotel they were in, mm. and so he like went to jump in the bed. And he's like, "Ugh, like, <laughs> that is gross." I know. The last person in that room, 
I'm probably on Murder Island right now. Yeah, exactly. Contestant. Competing for a million dollars. I like that Murder, Murder Island's Island. getting in two episodes. Yes. <laughs> Very it's trendy. Become, yeah. It's going to become a show. Oh, someone's going to try and steal it. I told it. you. Well, you no, hold on, but this is enough to be copyrighted, right? No. No, you, gotta, you, have you to still have to you file I have it. to file paperwork? You better do it, man. Now, we could play this in court when we sued them. Yeah, so the date is... Um, February... No, it's like January... January 30th. 30th. January, January 30th, 30th today. Yeah. Right, January 30th so from January the Cayman 30th. Islands. <laughs> Maybe they have different laws in the Cayman Islands yes. as to what you can say. I am copywriting Murder Island, <laughs> I don't Inc. think that makes it legal. What do you mean? <laughs> we see this what will happen audio. now. If we go to court, they'll say, I didn't hear this podcast, and uh, I checked the copyrights, and there was no such thing, and so I started uh, my show, Murder Island. I'd like to... Cross-examine you, Mr. Burnett. I would like to request his internet history. Oh, yes. Thank wow. you very much. Look at you. You should be a lawyer. Wow. Yes. Anyway, thank you for listening very much to the Super Bowl pod. We'll come back next week. We'll have more Super Bowl stories. We'll all be together again in studio. Uh, when are you coming back from the Cayman Islands? Pop? On Friday. Oh, no, I'm back Thursday night, so. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of your trip. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> kids, kids, settle down. Daddy's here. <laughs> Thank you, Sirius Lester. Thank you, Stoff. Uh, thank you, Puff from the Cayman Islands. Thank you to all our guests earlier on the show, which I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Elton Ron was last week, James. Elton Ron was last yes, week. Yes. Uh, yeah, we might be taping this a little bit early. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Rubber Boots Podcast. Hey, how are you? I got a question that I read. Really wanna ask you Wait Don't hang up I need to know so I'm gonna try and push my love Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green or black or white? Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Do you like the dunk tank? Tonight, tonight, tonight.